Okay, in this video what I want to show you is how you configure a base and rover configuration using Topcon's GNSS receivers. I happen to have a, a Topcon Hyper VR set over here with UHF radio, so I'll be uh, going through with those settings, but they're very similar with other receivers. So let's go into configure, let's go into survey, and if I hit select from library, I don't have a Hyper VR base and rover configuration here, so we'll just hit add. Yeah, we'll start making it. So call this Hyper VR Base and Rover with UHF radios. Again, it doesn't have to be this descriptive, but it's uh, easy for me to then figure out what configuration I saved and how I called it. It happens to be RTK. So the type is set. I have the Rover and the Base are both top cons, so that's correct. Again, this would work with any other Sokia configuration too, but uh, these are top cons right now. I am mm, connecting to my base receiver that you can see here as a Hyper VR, so that is correct. If it was any other model, you can choose it from here, of course, but I'm using a Hyper VR. My serial number, you can input it in here, but I'm typically not inputting anything in here because it doesn't make or break uh, the connection. Elevation mask, I default to 13 degrees. RTK format, uh, this was a little bit controversial um, in the past, so you might want to try RTCM 3.x if you're going with maybe old school uh, base and rover configuration. But if you're going to be using your GPS and GLONASS and Galileo and Beidou or QZSS satellites, what you may want to do is you may want to do the MSM uh, 3 over here. So I'll leave this on here. Uh, antenna. Um, should be Hyper VR because I mean it is the receiver and the antenna are actually the same in this case. Um, this is an important one. So when you're setting up your uh, GPS base, typically it's on a tripod or some kind of a mount. If that tripod is a vertical height tripod, meaning it actually has a center post which you're resting on top of your uh, monument, this antenna height, and let's say you say it is two meters, so if I type in two uh, over here, the, you might want to have just moved to the next screen unless you realize that, wait a minute, this is an actual slant antenna height measurement method that's uh, being uh, proposed over here. So if I have a vertical tripod or a GPS tripod, I need to go in here and edit this and change this to so that the icon in here actually looks like it's a straight pole to the dead center of the ARP on the antenna, which is the bottom threads. So now that means it's a GPS tripod and it's a two meter height straight to uh, from the point that we're occupying to the bottom threads of the actual GPS. If you're using a traditional tripod, you may want to switch this to slant. Then you have to actually measure the height to the to the side of the depending on what kind of uh, GPS receiver you're using. But it won't. It's going to be a slant measurement height, and this is going to have to be edited every time. Um, for when you're using regular tripods, I usually leave this at zero because there is a next screen which we will go through uh, that actually allows you to change this on the fly when you're starting the base dialog. So for now, I'm using a regular tripod. I will leave this at zero meters and then actually adjust it as I start my base. Um, all right, next screen. Um, the Hyper VRs have an internal radio and I do not like uh, where it says do not set up radio as a model. So it happens to be an R2 light UHF. If you're using other receivers, you might have a digital UHF option here. You might have long link if you're using Hyper SRs, for example, or Hyper HRs or even the VRs. But right now I'm using the R2 light UHF. Uh, the baud rate, this is a little bit tricky. Occasionally, when you have problems with connections, you may want to actually switch this to auto so that the you know, software actually finds the appropriate baud rate. But typically, the baud rate is 115-200. But this is my first go-to if I have a problem with connecting to the radios. All right, next. These are, again, your preference. I like modulation, modulation for FSK, protocol PDL. It's a base radio, and I want to push the distance as far as I can but for my rover to receive it, so one watt is what I want. Scrambling and FEC, I never leave them uh, say do not set because do not set means I don't know what they are. So I'd rather know that they're on, on or off, off or in whatever configuration they are, you choose to have it. It doesn't really matter 
I haven't seen profound uh, results between having it on or off, but if you leave them on this way, um, you know what to set your over at. So 4FSK PDL 1 watt on on. Next, same dialogue, but now talking about the rover configuration. So it's still a Bluetooth receiver. It's a Hyper VR, serial number blank, elevation mask, uh, RTK format on the uh, rovers always going to be RTCM 3X. That MSM is the multi-signal message, I think, um, that still gets uh, transferred over to the rover and it'll understand it. Uh, you see that uh, the rovers usually default to the vertical height because you're using a two meter pole. So that's correct. But again, if you're trying to do something fancy and you're not using a pole and you're measuring to the side as a slant measurement height, just be aware that you have to change that to that. And this is your dead giveaway where you actually have a tripod or something else uh, rather than the pole showing on the, this icon over here. But two meters is correct for me. Once again, we will carry through with the same settings as we had on the base. So we're also using an R2 light UHF radio, same baud rate. Again, if I'm having a problem with it, I'll switch it to auto so that the program figures out the problem. But uh, 115, 200 is usually the default. Hit next. Uh, modulation for FSK, PDL, no wattage because this is not outputting. This is actually receiving on the radio uh, radio side, on the rover side. Uh, scrambling, we had it on on the base. We better have it on on the rover. And the same thing, FEC, forward error correction, also on on the base. You need to have it on on the rover also to successfully connect to it. All right, next. Once again, I have a fancy... Uh, Hyper VR, which has tilt correction on it. I typically change this to a 15 degree correction. Um, I also occasionally, when I'm feeling very lazy, I can actually select the auto store after two seconds. That way, without me prompting the um, software, it'll actually store a point for me. But eh, I'll leave it off, and it is something that you can actually change on the fly. So we'll leave this okay. Next, uh, three shots for my precise measurement. One reading for a, a more quick measurement, I guess. Uh, what else is in here? You can select your precision and the values that you don't want to be above when you're actually storing positions um, for your standard deviations, but I usually don't change those. Um, this is a default for your distance for uh, when you're doing automatic uh, topographic uh, measurements by distance, by time, by slope, by elevation. Again, kind of up to you, so this will not uh, make or break a solution. Horizontal and vertical distance tolerance for your stakeout um, warning, meaning if you're more than five centimeters or two inches away from your horizontal or vertical position that you're trying to stake out, it'll warn you if you're within. It's not going to, so up to you to actually adjust these. Um, same logic for your precise and your quick measurements under the stake setting screen. Your, the size of your stakes you can specify over here. This is, uh, I think, 30 inches, but again, not usually something that I adjust. Uh, flag type that you want when you're actually storing your staked up positions, so up to you. Uh, another thing that I'll mention, and I'll make, I've mentioned it many times, is if you're storing uh, staked positions uh, right now in the default setting, when you're st storing or staking up point number 100, for example, it'll store it as point number 100, and underscore STK. Some AutoCAD, Civil 3D, Carlson Survey, MicroStation might not like um, uh, alphanumeric characters in its point name. So you may want to change this to a design point plus constant. I've seen this to be the most frequently used um, variation of these settings, meaning if you're staking out point number 100 and you actually store that position, it'll store it as 10,100 right now because it'll just add this 10,000 to it. So and it'll become a numerical value rather than alphanumeric value. So hit next. I'm using a Hyper VR by default. It actually can track all of these satellites. I have it um, on. If you don't have yours, uh, be able to track Galileo's or Beidou or the QZSS satellites. You can uncheck them here, but on my case, in my case, I'll just leave this on. Um, if you're looking at uh, faster positioning, uh, RTK position should be in the extrapolation 
uh, uh, selection over here. If you change it to match epic, you will be only getting a position every once a second. Whereas if you do extrapolation and you have a 10 hertz system or a 100 hertz system, the um, changes in your position will be changing uh, that many more uh, times per second. A uh, little bit less accurate, but again, better for stakeout. This is a little bit more accurate, but slower and uh, a little bit, uh, you know, held back. Uh, satellite limit, I usually don't change. Multipath reduction I have on. High vibration environment. Automatic base detection. All right. Nothing else that I set over here. So if you have all of these settings uh, saved, then you can pull these up upon connection to your uh, hardware. So I'll I first connect to my base and next connect to my rover and actually go with it. And there's a separate video on how I actually do that. All right. Hopefully this video was helpful. And if you have any questions or uh, comments, leave them below.